Hello again. In this episode, we are going to answer the question, what is the best investment strategy? Now, this is a very powerful topic because a lot of people don't understand that prudent investing involves strategy more than the commodity. So I'm going to show you how to choose the best strategy instead of thinking that that comes with buying a commodity like gold, silver, this mutual fund, or this stock or bond. And I'm going to use a very powerful metaphor to teach this. So if you were going to be playing in a golf tournament, let's say, and you had the choice of using a professional golfer like Phil Mickelson's swing, or you could use his clubs, what would you choose? I'd rather have the swing, not the clubs. You see, most financial advisors that I've observed seem to focus on the commodity or the clubs. Buy this stock, this bond, or these mutual funds, or gold, or the silver. It's not in the commodity. It's in the strategy. It's in the swing. So when we talk about the difference between the swing and the clubs, I love to teach and empower people with the proper strategy, the swing of asset optimization, tax minimization, and empowering all of their authentic wealth is what I call it. When we talk about money, the swing has to do with making sure that we pass the liquidity safety rate of return test but also we eliminate the biggest dangers, taxes, inflation, and market volatility. And we do that by seizing the best opportunities to be able to use a strategy. Now, one of my favorite strategies, for example, is indexing. And I'm not talking about index mutual funds. I'm talking about a strategy when my money is linked to a return or an index like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones, I get to participate when the market is doing well. But if the market crashes, I don't lose. I may not make much of anything, but I, I, I don't lose. And Warren Buffett has two rules of investing. Rule number one, don't lose money. <laughs> and rule number two, don't forget rule number one. So we want to make sure we focus more on the swing than the clubs. I mentioned that uh, one of my favorite strategies or swings is indexing. Now, I love that because the fact of the matter is the market goes up and down. It's like a person with a yo-yo uh, walking up some stairs, uh, hopefully. But sometimes we have period like 2000 to 2010 where that person with a yo-yo was like walking across the flat surface. In other words, the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones was where it was 2010, 10 years earlier, and we call it the lost decade. So when we talk about the best investment strategy, I want to make sure that where I put my money is liquid. It has safety, and I mean safety of principle, even more than safety of the institution, so that when the market goes down, I don't lose. That's why I like the strategy of indexing and then to be able to earn predictable rates of return. So when we look at uh, American history since the Great Depression, we have usually in a 10 year period, there'll be seven years that the market is up and three years that the market's down. 2000 to 2010, we had five years the market lost and only five years it went up. And so people get confused because the strategy they choose, they put their money in the market and it goes up and up and up. And then all of a sudden they lose, like in 2001 to 2003, they lost 40% in the value of their account. If they had a million bucks, let's say, that they had accumulated their entire lifetime in the year 2000, they saw that million dollar nest egg dwindle in value down to 600,000 by the end of 2003. That was caused by 9-11, the terrorist attacks. It took four years until 2007 just to get back what they lost. And then what happened in 2008? <laughs> Another 40% in a 10 year period. And it took till about 2012 before they made back what they lost there. You know, I use the strategy of indexing 
so that my million in 2000 doubled to 2 million by 2007. And by 2012, it had tripled. In fact, by 2015, it had quadrupled when most Americans were barely back to, to start making some progress again. So the point is, you wanna have a strategy to achieve financial independence. And I'm gonna show you, if we were all involved in a race to achieve financial independence, and we're going to call this the million dollar dash. So many times uh, people put money into taxed as earned investments, and that's like crawling toward this finish line. If you put money in non-qualified tax deferred accounts like annuities, where you take after tax money and put it in there, that's like walking. Now, traditional IRAs or 401ks uh, are like uh, jogging with the wind at the back at the beginning of the race. You use tax advantage dollars on, on the front end, whereas Roth IRAs or 401ks, you pay tax on the front end, but you have the wind at the back at the end because uh, you don't have to pay tax on the back end during the harvest of your money and your investments whereas traditional IRAs or 401ks you do. Now, I like to uh, be able to sprint toward the finish line, and you do that by using indexing. So I'm gonna sort of sum up what actually happened in that lost decade where people were actually cheering when the market went down because they chose the right strategy. So indexing is a wonderful strategy. So let me use this again to show what happened in that lost decade. From 2000 to 2007, there were three loss years, but I didn't lose during those three years, 2001, two, and three. I may not have made anything, but I didn't lose. Everybody else in America is panicking because their money is dwindling down by 40%. Now, Will Rogers once said people get more concerned about the return of their money instead of the return on their money when things get rough. Well, during that time period, I didn't have to sit there for three years and earn nothing. I just sort of went back and said to the insurance institution where I have my serious cash, just pay me your general account portfolio rate, which at the time was 5%. So I still earned 5%. And so in that decade, instead of five loss years, I only had two loss years because I'm also using a strategy called rebalancing. So I don't have to sit there uh, like a bump on the log waiting for the economy uh, to come back and everybody to stop rubbernecking on the freeway. I only experienced a 0% or no gain for two years. The other years I earned four or 5%, but the five years the market went up, I earned two of those years up to a cap of 15%. In other episodes, I explained what a cap is. But see, I have a cap on what I can earn, but I have a floor. I don't lose. And that's the key message behind choosing the right strategy. If I were you, I would consider putting my money where you don't lose, but you still have a potential for upside gain. So the message is in 2008, as Warren Buffett put it, when the tide went out, it revealed who was swimming naked, he said. A lot of people in America felt like they'd lost their future again for the second time in a decade. A lot of our clients using the strategy of indexing were like, cheering, go, 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 because they weren't losing. Many of the first 90 days of 2009 locked in gains of 16% tax-free. And they did that using the laser fund. And so I want you to understand that it's in the swing, not the clubs. Sometimes I show people when to use a driver or a seven iron or a sand wedge, but it's not in the clubs, it's in the swing or the strategy. Rebalancing was another example. You want to eliminate the dangers of taxes, inflation, and market volatility by using strategies that are tax-free, that link your returns to the things that inflate, that also you are immune from the market volatility. So I would invite you to watch this episode so that you can get more information if this is resonating and uh, arousing curiosity.